All right, YouTube, I'm super excited about this update. We're gonna be talking about mortgage and how it has been impacted by COVID-19. I have with me, Mr. Chuck Tudor, and man, this dude just like knows so, so much and um, is a super duper expert in this mortgage field. Um, Chuck, do you wanna just give you know everybody a little bit of like taste of like what your experience has been and how you got here? Sure. Gosh, you know, it started years ago. I uh, I started as a, uh, a development contractor in in, uh, in real estate and rolled out of that and got my uh, real estate license. So I sold real estate for quite a while and noticed that uh, uh, there was a little bit of a disconnect between the realtors and the and the consumer and and uh, the uh, mortgage guy. So I got wow. my mortgage license and decided to, you know, help that cause out a little bit. So I've been licensed since, since 2016 and and I've been going strong. Wow. Awesome. Well, sweet. I'm super glad to have you on the show. And um, thank you. Yeah, I think people are going to be, I don't know, at least maybe like eyes opened about what's been going on. Sure. So maybe you could give sure. everybody like a rundown of what getting approved for a mortgage or like and getting that mortgage closed and everything was like before COVID. Well, so the, like the year, the 12 months leading up to COVID you know, it was your traditional, you know, W-2s and pay stubs and bank statements. And, you know, we, we as a broker, we have uh, we have lenders that we deal with that can turn an underwriting decision over in 24 to 48 hours. So it was it was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of non-QM programs that were out there that uh, for the people that didn't quite fit inside the box that were working out really quickly and really well. Um, and, uh, yeah, we had I mean, we had closings in 12 to 14 days, like the very bare minimum. Uh, wow. that you can close a, a loan on with all the trade rules. We, we were able to get them done. We we're closing fast on the, yeah. you know, on the, the real easy deals. So, uh, but typically under 30 days and it was done. There was no question on decisions uh, from the underwriting people. And we just, uh, it was, it was a well-oiled machine, but that was then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's kind of like these last like 60 days have been really different. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. So how has that been going? Like, you know, since well, all started. Yeah, you know, since it's all since this COVID thing started, you know, very the very first right out of the gate was uh, the um, the lender confidence. What dropped? It just dropped out. People, mm. were, and the first thing that went was non QM. Non QM just they just shut it down. So those lenders just closed up, and we weren't able to get any of that non QM money. So uh, so let's just rate. hang on one second. So non QM, could you maybe just back up and tell people a little bit about what that is, like how that's different than regular mortgage? Uh, not so it's non qualified mortgage. So okay. non QM means that you that you're not a borrower that fits inside the conforming box <clears throat> or non conforming. It's like the 640 credit score FHA you know, W-2 earner, all that, all the basic principles of, of us, of a simple deal, a conforming loan. Okay. And so what a non-QM is, is it's like, it might be that self-employed person or somebody okay. who has 600 credit, mm -hmm. but I have a lend, we have lenders that work with overlays that they'll loan on FHA at a 580 or a 600 credit okay. score. And some of that stuff has gone away. That stuff is yeah. pretty much uh, out the door. Um, we had actually for a little while, we had some 12 and 24 month uh, self-employed bank statement loans. Um, yeah, I heard if, about you, that. if people remember from years gone by that how well those worked out. So we had those available, uh, but they, you know, in that non-QM world, those were, uh, those were pretty tough to get qualified, uh, mm -hmm. but we got them done. Okay. So those have all gone away. Okay. So that's yeah. done. No more of that. Yep. Okay. Right. And yeah, well, I think, for now, I think, anyway, they'll come. Yeah. They, I think they'll come. They'll probably come back. But they're as so. What happens is every time we have an event like this, mm -hmm. every detail of every every loan program is scrutinized, highly scrutinized, and then all of a sudden they become more and more difficult to obtain those loans. Right. 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 Yeah. And so that's sort of what I've been hearing on my end. Like, you know, the credit scores are higher. So is that just for? Like qualified mortgage or is that or is so is that different than the non-qm folks so when people were non-qm were was it the same or you see what i'm saying was it the same before COVID 19 yeah. yes 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 uh, yeah well yeah i mean it, so non-qm is always a tough a tough loan to to be approved for right uh but but they were there and so okay. non-QM is typically some either portfolio money or private money, things like mm -hmm. that. There's a lot of times it's not government-backed money. I see. And so when you have a, 
you know what I mean? So when you have, uh, when you have a 640 credit score, that's the, that's the FHA standard mm -hmm. uh, minimum. And so 640 on up to the, the maximum of 850 was, it, it all fell in that category of a, a QM mortgage. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it hasn't changed that. Those guidelines haven't changed on QM right now because non QM mm -hmm. just doesn't exist. Right, <laughs> so, right. and we're, we have one lender that, uh, one of our big lenders, it's uh, supposed to give us some information this Monday that they're going to open the doors to that just a little bit. They okay. might, they might, they might eke it open a little bit and give us a little taste again. So oh, we'll see what yeah. happens. That's interesting. That's super interesting. Right. So for the for the folks that are just getting going to go out there and just get like a regular mortgage, so they're not going for the non QM side, do they have to have a higher credit score now at this point, or could they have um, like the same? Yeah, not necessarily. Um, okay. We still have programs down to six hundred, but uh, the lenders are they're scrutinizing their income and their. Uh, their their VOE, which is our verification of employment. Mm. Uh, one of the things that we're doing right now is that our lenders are, are doing a VOE in the beginning, mm -hmm. a verification of employment, and then they're doing them right up almost to the day that it closes to make sure they're still employed. Well, you know what? So, Look, I know, just had a I had a closing yeah. where they were they did that verification on the day of funding closing day. Yeah. Yep. yep. They do a phone call, a quick uh, VOE the day of closing, just to make sure these people are still making money. Yeah. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen day by day. So, uh, you know, the scrutiny has been, has changed quite a bit for the, from the last month. It's just been, it's been crazy. Yeah. And the, you know, the lender, the lender and investor confidence in, in the market with the, the rates dropping and the rates go, I mean, the rates have been nuts. They've been all over the yeah. place. Are they still like, yeah, they're falling right now. They're they're looking pretty good right now. But we got there was a point where 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 we had when you have discount points when you can when you can right. buy a rate down. So it used to be like you could buy a rate down for at two point seven five percent. You could buy it down for like you know thirty five hundred or four grand. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's like I look at I'm looking at rates and I'm like holy crap! I'm seeing like a three and a quarter from one lender. That's that's like ten grand Ooh. just to get three and a quarter. But another lender is going to be you know, at, at par, which means mm -hmm. that there's no cost, no credit. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> so yeah. the rates have been nuts. Yeah, they've been really yeah. nuts. Yeah, and I, I remember that at the beginning of the, all of this, they were crazy. Yeah. Like in in a single day, they would be like. Single day. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And it's wor even even worse now. But, yeah. you know, we're able to get some good locks from, from some different lenders. So, you know, as a broker, it's kind of fun because we've got uh, about 25 different lenders that we work with. Right. And so everything from, you know, the the perfect the perfect borrower right down to the guy that's going to need some work on credit or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's um, uh, we've got lenders for all types. Cool. Well, is it true that um, that they're not allowing you to like lock as early? on yes um so there's some lenders are only offering a 45 day lock mm. which that's crazy to me um we've had have lenders that uh, are 30 days and some are offering some 15s mm -hmm. um, one of our wholesale lenders is quicken mm -hmm. and quicken wholesale uh those guys just released in the state of washington a 30-day early lock Hmm. which means that you're able to lock it on, on submitted the, the submission of the application. Wow. So what they wanted to have, they wanted to have all the conditions cleared and ready to, as if the, the loan was going into close mm -hmm. before you could lock the rate. Wow. And that, and they, they finally got rid of that, but now we're at that spot for a 15 day lock. So if I want to do a 15 day lock, mm -hmm. I've got to wait until just before the thing's ready to go. Wow. That's so yeah. Crazy. So, yeah, it's been nuts. It's been it's been kind of a crazy crazy train we're riding on here. So yeah. it's pretty fun. Yeah. So I mean, has has so I imagine that means that there have been um, deals that were going to go through that maybe fell out because maybe the buyer didn't qualify anymore. Do you think it's is that mostly mm -hmm. due to changes in employment status or is it changes in like the overlays? Like, oh, the credit's not good now, so they're out. It's, you know what, it's been a change of the, the DTI, debt to income oh, overlay. Okay. We had, um, you know, we were, we were up, uh, one of my lenders we use uh, was at a 56.99 FHA mm. uh, DTI and just overnight it went down to 50. Wow. And so if you fell into that spot from 50 to 56.99, uh, you're out. Wow. So that, and I'm, actually I had to cancel a couple of deals just because of that. 
So uh, loan to values are changing a little bit. There's all kinds of things that are changing, all kinds of parameters from different banks that are that are definitely affecting the rates and definitely affecting the ability to get it close. Yeah, yeah. And then um, like the, um, the down payment on investment properties and all that stuff is different now than it used to be. Is that oh, yeah. right? Well, well, investment stuff's always been typically a 20% down, but uh, still it's like, you know, they're not, they're not going to sway from that at this, in no. this juncture. No, yeah. no, they sure aren't. Well, I mean, it's interesting. What do you think, what do you think things are going to be like after COVID? I mean, you know, largely mortgage has been pretty remote. You know, you're, you're working at home. I'm working at home. you like, you know, yep. you don't really necessarily have to be in front of the person. Do you think that you would like use Zoom more? Do you think that people are going to just kind of go to that? Um, yeah, you know, we, I have used Zoom quite a bit. Uh, it is nice to see who you're working with. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, I mean, it's the closest thing we have right now to being in person. Yeah. Um, you know, but mostly really we do most of our financing is all remote. I mean, it really, if you really think about it, it's over the phone or internet based, uh, mm -hmm. you know, email and, and a few phone calls. Um, right. so for the most part that I don't think that's going to change. I think that's, that's kind of where we're going. Mm -hmm. I think that you're not going to see LOs in the office as much as they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, you know, this, this, uh, this is a whole new, whole new um, era for us. I, you know, some of the his, historical events that have happened that uh, have kind of changed the way we do things are like 2008, 2009, right? I mean, right. You know, we had a, a mortgage issue back then and, sure. uh, you know, a bunch of rules changed and now we have to, we have to make sure we do things differently to follow those rules. Um, and think about 9-11 when 9-11 happened. Well, now, you know, we do things differently. I mean, so we're going to see some changes, I think, coming out of this thing as far as, um, you know, personal safety and, and uh, you know, remote versus in person. I mean, it's just going to be different. It's mm -hmm. going to be a little different, I think. Mm -hmm. But, you know, from my standpoint, you're in the real estate world, so you have to meet people, right? <laughs> right? So right. we don't necessarily have to meet them. However, I like to meet them because I like to feel where they're coming from. Sure, and so sure. It, it's going to change a little bit. Yeah. But it's yeah. okay. Yeah. I imagine that. How about, yeah. I mean, do you think that the, the standards are going to change? Do you think they're going to stay this strict? I mean, it sounds a little bit like it kind of strict, less strict, strict, less strict. Yeah. Well, it was well, the lenders tightening up because they're, you know, the confidence of lending money has changed. So right. what they're, you know, they're just, they're putting precautionary measures in place to, you know, not overextend and, and, you know, when, when people aren't working or their jobs are on the line or they're, you know, at risk of being laid off, well, you know, the confidence of lending somebody money is, is uh, lessened considerably, right? I mean, if mm -hmm. I put myself in that shoe, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I get it. Um, I think that th they're going to loosen up again. I heard, I read somewhere uh, today, Inman, I think, uh, where 2021, they expect the FHA rates to be in the twos, all the way in wow. the twos. And so I'm like, okay, well, we'll see. But, uh, you know, follows the bond market we'll see what that 10 year it yield does. looks like. And, it and, uh, it's changing every day. Yeah. As you know, the, 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 the prime rate, the federal rate is zero right now. It's at zero. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I mean, how do you, how do you work on that? <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know. So well, it is. it's good for us though. Cause eventually our rates are going to catch up to that zero. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. What do you think? will be like sort of like the biggest challenge for like the mortgage industry coming out of this. Like, I mean, do you think the remote part's going to be challenging? I mean, do you think it's something maybe that we haven't even discussed? Is it just getting people qualified? Uh, you know, if the, if the, if the overlays and guidelines stay the same, uh, it's going to be more difficult to approve people because they were, you know, we're doing a, remember we approve on gross income. Mm -hmm. And so when you take your gross income before taxes, if you're at 56% of that income, that's a pretty considerable amount of your income when you really look at the net, at your net income in relation right. to that gross. Right. So, uh, yeah, some good might come of it to, you know, so that we don't have people that are borrowing money that probably shouldn't or aren't ready. Mm -hmm. However, you know, the overlays are going to be out there. I know that there's going to be a bunch of lenders that pop right back up to 55, 56% uh, DTI again. Mm -hmm. It'll happen. Mm -hmm. It'll happen because you, it, I mean, realistically, everybody carries, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody carries a little bit of debt. Right. So we've got to, you know, it's going to have to even it out. I, I, I don't know, foreseeable in the next couple of months, uh, 
I mean, we could probably see, we we're going to see the same guidelines here for probably the next 30, 60 days. I would imagine. I think it's going to take a little bit of time after that before mm. we get caught up. But you know, if I looked into a crystal ball, I would hope that they you know that they write themselves. So the outlook's good. I think the the mortgage outlook is going to be good as long as it follows the real estate market, you know, just right. if the real estate market picks back up again, which doesn't sound like it's really fallen off too much. It's just the, it's just the, you know, the, the avenues in which you've got to show houses and things like that are changed a little bit, which is okay. Right. 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 So we'll be right there with you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's a little bit like just sort of depends on how long this kind of drags on. It's yeah. just going to keep going. Um, do you think there are anything, like any things that you might do differently now that we have COVID? Like, you know, just you as a, you know, in your business? Uh, you know, not really. Uh, I mean, we, we've got to approach lending a little differently. I mean, just from the aspect of, you know, having it wide open to be able to do anything we want to now, we're like, okay, we've got to, We've got we have to really analyze what we're looking at to mm -hmm. see if they can if they're really affordable, mm -hmm. and so um, you know your buying power is going to drop. So right. if we so we really need to evaluate those. We're going to have to go back to all the people we've we've gotten uh, applications started with and reevaluate and take a look at where they're at. I've had a lot of them drop off just mm -hmm. you know just because they were in that DTI range or or um, you know one of the other spouse lost their job or 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 or. There's just a lot of variables that are going to happen, but I don't think for our state, from my standpoint, it doesn't change really what, what I do. I mean, mm -hmm. cause everything's remote anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I've, very little did I ever meet people. And I mean, I met people in person, but usually it's just over the phone or over a zoom call or, yeah. or, you know, or at an open house. Actually, that's what's going to change yeah. is probably the open houses. Um, I like doing open houses cause I meet a lot of great people, but if we can't do them, we can't do them. It is what it is. But, yeah. you know, so it'll yep. open up again. We'll yep. get there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm too. Yeah. So I, think so too. I just, I just try to spend as much time as I can sending emails. So I, I, you know, I, I like to do zoom calls, but I also got involved with uh, the bomb bomb. Mm. I don't know if you know what bomb bomb is where you mm -hmm. can send a video email. Right. And uh, that's kind of fun to do. So people can actually see you yeah. instead of just getting an email from you, you know, just a little bit more personal. Just try to keep the personal attention as much as I can. Yeah. Well, excellent. Well, hopefully they just, it just turns around and we get everything opened up and moving forward. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much. If people wanted to yeah. ask questions or get in touch with you, which is maybe like an email the best way. Yeah. Just, yeah. Shoot me an email or, or if phone calls fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, my, uh, because I talked about some rates, my NMLS number is one five, four, eight, 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 five. Uh, okay. my email is, uh, uh, Charles, like, you know, like royalty, charles.tutor at mottomortgage.com. Reach me there or my cell phone number at 425-616-5636. Feel free to text me or give me a ring. Sweet. Well, thank you so, so much. Thank you. And we will just be in touch. I mean, as this sort of develops and changes, if anything else pops up, we can get on here and talk more about it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd be more than happy to discuss whatever we want to discuss. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Good. Thanks, Ashley. Pre bye -bye. Appreciate you. Bye-bye. <laughs>